Hey everyone, this video is going to describe some questions in the category of number and algebra. Now, in particular, we're going to be looking at the classification under that category called arithmetic operations. And we can see that the specific sub criteria we're looking at today is actually called determining unknowns. So to do that, let's take a look at this quick description that tells us some basic information about what you'll encounter in these types of questions. So determining unknowns in arithmetic operations refers to mathematics calculations involving the four operations of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. As with all algebra in these questions, you will need to determine what best replaces the symbol in a number sentence. Remember the meaning of inequality signs such as the greater than sign and the less than sign. Okay, so Determining unknowns is quite a simple concept, right? We've given a question and you want to figure out what is missing. Now, in these types of math questions, these uh, unknowns are usually going to be represented with some sort of letter. Usually they are alphabetic letters, but sometimes you'll also see some other funky ones like shapes or even Greek letters. So fundamentally, these are basically no different from algebra because it basically means that we need to be masters of using our four orders of operations. Now, all that means is that we just need to understand how addition, subtraction, multiplication and division work and also understand that there is a specific order in which you need to tackle those orders of operations. I'm sure you've all heard of the bod mass rule or bid mass or pen PEMDAS, wherever, uh, all three of those variations are basically the same, different names for the same concept where you need to tackle any brackets you see in the question first, followed by any indices or powers or roots then you can do your multiplication and division and finally you do your addition and subtraction last. So as long as you know how to do those things, these questions aren't too difficult as long as you fall back on the core concepts that you build upon. So the additional thing that we also need to make note for these types of questions is that they can involve inequalities. So inequalities in mathematics refers to these funky little signs, these arrow shaped signs that are used because writing greater than and less than is cumbersome and boring and no one wants to do that. So maths is all about using symbols to replace a bunch of English words. So the symbols that we use in this specific context are these two signs. Now, if these two signs, and you look at them, they kind of confuse you a little bit, or it's just been a while and you kind of forgot what they mean, I think a really good way to remember what they mean is by using a game of Pac-Man. So, depending on your age, I'm not sure if you would have heard of Pac-Man, but I'm sure you've had the concept of the game where you've got this funny little, whoops, that looks awful. You've got this funny little man, and it's usually yellow, and it's got a, it's called Pac-Man. This thing's called Pac-Man, and the concept of the game is this yellow ball human mouth thing. So this is the mouth aims to get points by eating a bunch of little balls. And it also has to run away from ghosts, but that's not really relevant to the story. So we're going to look at how the goal of Pac-Man is to eat a bunch of points to win the game. So that means Pac-Man's mouth which you'll kind of recognize as looking pretty much exactly like these inequality signs, will always point towards whichever side has more points. Pac-Man wants to eat points to win, so it's obviously going to face that way. Whereas on the other side is where Pac-Man has already eaten the point, so there's nothing, no points here. So the corner of the Pac-Man's mouth is towards where there's no more points. So if you kind of forget what inequality signs look like, always remember that the mouth should be open towards the bigger number. Now there are other, sorry, other inequality signs where there's actually another line behind the Pac-Man mouth thing, and that just means greater than and equal. So it's basically the inequality sign and the equal sign mashed together. So that's what it means. Now. Now that we've understood the fundamental concepts of what belongs in these types of questions, we're going to take a look at a quick example. 
So through this example is hopefully we kind of get an idea of how you're going to tackle these questions rather than just focusing on the answer. So in this particular question, we've given a series of equations. Now, in these three equations, we're told that a different combination of letters is equal to three different numbers. And we want to figure out which of these below statements are true. And that's where we see those funny little inequality signs come into play. So that means we need to, first of all, realize that we need to understand what these letters represent. Now, if this was an algebra question, it would possibly be that there's enough information to use substitution and figure out what each of these three letters mean. But if you take a look at the information provided, we don't actually have enough information to do that. So then how do we do this question? Now, in the scenario where the question just simply hasn't given you enough information to figure out what individually each of these letters mean, then it's time to take a step back and look at the bigger picture. Then you'll be able to realize that there is a specific combination of letters that is recurring in every equation. So for example, you'll notice that the letters, what is it, whoops, wrong letter, sorry. The letters Q and Z appear in all three equations. Now that's quite interesting because then we can realize that that means the letters P, T and Y must have different values to lead to different answers when added together with Q and Z. Now it doesn't matter that the Q and Z are in different orders because we know that adding two plus three is equal to five and adding three plus two is still five. When it comes to just addition, you can do it in any order you want. So the order being flipped doesn't really matter. So if we, for example, say that Q plus Z is equal to some random number box, we don't know what it is, so we're just going to represent it with just a box. Just to make things easier, because writing two letters is more bothersome than writing one, and we don't know what both of these things equal, so we can say that it's equal to this box. So let me rewrite these equations with the box instead of the letters Q and Z, and we see P plus box is equal to 49, T plus box is equal to 48, and y plus box is equal to 51. Now, since we know that the box is the same number across these three equations, again, we can quite clearly see that the only thing changing in these three equations is these three letters values. So we can basically use that to our advantage to figure out which is the biggest number. If P, is going to p plus square is equal to 49 but t plus square is equal to 48 we can realize that p must be smaller than t so if i want to rewrite that equation using the inequality sign remember that the pac-man mouth will go towards the bigger number so the p the mouth will point towards the p and it's going to face away from the t now, similarly, let's compare these two equations. From these two equations, we can see that adding t with the square gives us 48, but adding y with the square gives us 51. So clearly, y has to be much bigger than t, and in fact, bigger than p, because uh, p only gave us 49, but adding it with y gave us 51. So clearly, y has to be the biggest letter here. Okay, so basically we've just figured out the relationship between these three letters. And that's essentially what the question wants us to do. We can straight away cancel out answer options C and E because we know that all three numbers has to be different to give us different answers. Now, as for the other things, we can check if that's correct. Is P bigger than Y? We know that's not true. Is T bigger than P. We know that's not true. T is actually smaller. And finally, is T smaller than Y? It is actually much smaller than Y. So this is correct and is the only correct solution. 
Okay, so that would be the strategy that you would follow whenever you're doing these types of questions. The number one goal is, as always, to kind of try and reduce the number of different letters possible, which allows us to understand what's going on in the equations much better than when there are so many letters that we just don't know the value of each of them representing. So that would be the kind of strategy I would follow whenever I am doing these determining unknown questions. And so I hope that those strategies were of some help to you when you do these questions in the future. Thanks everyone so much for listening.